This is the Dean, the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean, this is the Dean Show. Bismillah, alhamdulillah. Greetings of peace, peace be to you. And you're watching the Dean Show. I'm Eddie, your host. When we come back, Alia is back on the Dean Show. The Muslim youth are learning Islam. And Islam, the more we learn it, the more we implement it, the more better is our life. The more it teaches us how, how to be the best human beings that you can be. And we're going to talk to one of those little Muslims when we come back here on the Dean Show. Sit tight. Don't go nowhere. This is the Dean, the Dean Show. This is 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 the Dean Peace be unto you. How are you, Alia? Good, good. Thank you for coming back to the Dean Show. We did a show before. Yes. And how did you? How did it come out? Did you? Uh, did your friends watch it? Did people see you on the Dean Show? Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Yes. Did you get a ch chance to share it with some of uh, the not yet Muslims? Yes. Yeah. What was their response? And they liked it too. Great, yeah. great. So for the people that don't know about you already. They can go to the deanshow.com and you know they can watch the first show that we did. Now you're a you're an author. With the help of your parents, you've written how many books? I've written four books, and I'm on my fifth one is on printing right now. What are they called again? Um, the first one is called Things Every Kid Should Know Smoking. The second one is called Things Every Kid Should Know Drugs. The third one is called Things Every Kid Should Know Bullying. And the fourth one is called Things Every Kid Should Know Alcohol. And the fifth one is called Things Every Kid Should Know Junk Food. Okay, so in your books you're teaching kids how to smoke, how to eat junk food, what's the best junk food, how to be a bully. Is that what your books are about? Um, it's actually trying to help them avoid those things. Oh, avoid those things. Because yes. you said, oh, okay, because you said uh, things every kid should know. It's not how to bully, how to smoke, mm -hmm. right. how to drink, not that. No. How to not do that. Yes. Okay, cool. Why, why, I mean, we covered some of these things before, but just kind of to, to, to you know, uh, recap. These books, are they meant to, they're really meant to help keep kids away from these bad things? Yes. What if someone says, look, this is, I mean, I think it's good for me. You know, alcohol makes me feel good. Well, it might feel, may, may, like, make you feel good right then, but it's not really good for you in the long run. Mm -hmm. And smoking, same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, what about parents? They're smoking and they're telling their, not, their kids not to smoke. Mm -hmm. what, what do you got to say to the parents who, who are, you know, being bad examples? Well, if, if you're doing it, then I don't know how your kid is thinking you're going to do it your, unless your kid's strong enough, you know, not to do it, you know. But I think more your kid's more likely going to have a chance of doing it because you're doing it, and so your kid is watching you do it, and I think they're more going to have a chance of doing it. So be a good example. Yes. Lead by example. Yes. Okay, don't smoke, don't drink, and don't bully. Okay, that's good. Now, uh, you know, for, again, we have so many, I call them not yet Muslim, because everyone has the potential to submit their entire selves to the one who created them. And that's what a Muslim is. Mm -hmm. What's Islam, though? I was going to define it. I mean, mm -hmm. can you define to us what is Islam? Well, Islam means... Islam means like peace, and sub Islam means peace. So when we're Muslims, we're to submitting to Islam. We're submitting to peace, and we're giving peace to the universe, to all around us, to plants, animals, humans, and of course, and we're worshiping Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the one who's the owner of peace, the one who gives peace, is the Creator of yes. the heavens and the earth. Yes. So when we submit ourselves to the one who created us, this is how we can give. We can have peace within ourselves, and naturally we're going to have peace with our environment, with the animals, yes. with the plants, with other human beings. Mm -hmm. That's what Islam is calling us to. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. And that's what a Muslim is, one who does Islam. So now, for those people who don't know much about Islam, 
you know what? They've learned some things here on the Dean Show and they're excited. They come back every week. Some of them, maybe they got their family members and they see you with the hijab. They might want to know, why is she wearing that? Well, the hijab isn't obligatory to you until you reach a certain age. But I started off when I was six because my mom also started and I, and I learned that it wasn't, it's never young when you want to start off something good and you want, and you want to do something when you're young and you want to do something good and it's never young, I mean, you're never young enough to start it. And I'm doing it for the, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so he, so I, he can be pleased with me inshallah. Yeah. Now, have you, have any, has anybody ever given you a hard time because of the hijab? Not mostly, but some people ask me, like for example, um, do you have any hair? And, you know, questions like that. And I'm like, yeah, you do a little less. So, yeah. Yes, so, yes um, there are some, sometimes some funny questions, but no, I, nobody really did that to me. Yeah, I'll share something with you. You know, somebody uh, asked the question, you know, why do your women cover, for instance? Mm -hmm. And did you hear the one about the two candies, the two pieces of candy? Mm -hmm. So the guy who was asked this, he took two pieces of candy and he threw them on the floor. The floor is like dirty, got dust over it, right? Mm -hmm. So then one was unwrapped. You know the candy has the wrapper? Yes. So one was with the wrapper and one was without the wrapper. So then he told the person to ask him, he said, you know, which one would you like to pick up off the floor now? Mm -hmm. What do you think he said? The one that was yeah. uncovered, now I got all the dirt on it and all this other stuff, mm -hmm. or the one that was wrapped up, sealed, tight? What do you think he said? Wrapped up. The one that was wrapped, was wrapped up. up. So then the light bulb went on. He said, oh, I see. Ah, and this is the Muslim woman, mm -hmm. our mothers, our daughters, our aunts, our grand... I mean, the, the woman is more precious than, mm -hmm. than candy or diamonds or any of these things. Mm -hmm. So Islam protects the woman. Mm -hmm. Definitely, yeah. yes. And do you feel more protected now where mm -hmm. you're wearing the hijab? Yes. Do you feel more respected? Yes. Ta why is that? Um, because when people see you and when you're trying to cover like for example, when Maryam, peace upon her, when Mary, when she used to cover her up, you never saw her uncovered. That's the like, mother of yes, Jesus. Yes. And whenever you saw her in a picture, people painted of her, people made of her, she was always covered up. And you see, none nowadays, when they're wearing their, their clothes, people respect them more because they think they're following their religion better than we are. So if, he, if, if Mary, peace be upon her, Maryam, if she can do it and if nuns can do it, how come Muslim women can't do it? How come there's like a double standard there when mm -hmm. some woman does it, suddenly she's oppressed? Yeah. Hmm. Well, that's true freedom then. Freedom within the bounds of morality is dressing up instead of dressing down, hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So that should be respected. You choose yeah. to wear more, and that is something that, you know what, if anybody looks at it, logically it makes sense, and one of the most righteous women, you just mentioned her name, Mary, the mother of Jesus, she was wearing the Muslim hijab yes. also. You're doing the same, we're continuing the same legacy, and we're going to come back with more of Alia. And we got a special guest here on the Dean Show, too. He'll be with us soon, Abraham. So don't go nowhere here on the Dean Show with Alia. Sit tight. Salam alaikum. And with good deeds, uh, we'll find that good breeds good. Clear out your mind and your heart of hatred. Mm -hmm and preconceived notions of racism and nationalism because you cannot have anything inside of you that's like that against people and still be successful with them. Back here on the Dean Show with Alia and we're going to continue on asking you some questions. Oh. All right. So, you know, there's a big thing in the media, you know, that Islam is being portrayed like it's something that is not good for humanity. Mm. Like it's something that is extreme. Does Islam teach you to be extreme? No, it doesn't. Does Islam teach you to be radical? No. In Islam, there, there are many different kinds of Muslims from all, from all kinds of... All, all, um, all parts of the world, and we are always supposed to be nice to everyone, but including those Muslims too. So now, does, does Islam teach you to hurt innocent people, to have mm. this idea that you want to hurt uh, no. children, actually, people who are not no. Muslim, to want to kill them? No, actually, I, th I believe it's just, either it's just in the Quran or in the Hadith. 
Um, but it says if you kill one person, it's like you killed the whole world. And if you save one person, then it's like you save what the whole world. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're you're not. I mean, you're not one of those radicals, are you? No. Okay. <laughs> I don't gotta be. All right. We we see we we find that funny. Mm -hmm. Now there are you know we have to admit there are some people who possibly you know they have some misinformation, but that's why we encourage everyone to come, watch the Dean Show, read some of your books, to figure mm -hmm. out really what the Muslim youth mm -hmm. are all about, and you know you're you're somebody who's a testimony to that. Thank you. All right, so we talked about the hijab, we talked about the terrorism, that Islam has nothing to do with this, and it's a shame that we have to constantly usually come back to this, but again, there's so many people out there who love what Islam is about, you know, it makes sense. Worship just God, do good, and, 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 and get paradise, right? Yep. So accountability. For your actions, day of judgment, all these things make sense, but then they hear something about Muslims and uh, in the news and the media, and then they get this ill f taste in their mouth, but now they get to hear it from us, and you know what? Uh, they, think, they start thinking a little bit different, and many of them even accept Islam. Hmm. Is it true that more, Muslim, more women are accepting Islam than men? Yes. Did you hear about that? Yes, I heard about that. Yeah, what do you got to say about that? Well, well, there in the in the world actually there are more women than men, yeah. so there are always going to be. But um, yeah, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Okay, uh, role models is very important mm -hmm. nowadays. The youth are taking bad people as role models, all right, mm -hmm. as their leaders. And you to get to where you were today, having you know, mashallah, this knowledge. Who did you have to take as a role model? Well, I, some of my role models are Rasulullah He was a great leader helping kids and adults. And he, he was one of my role models. And another one of my role models is Fatima. She was also very brave and courageous. And she helped her father a lot in his mission to, in Islam. And some of my other role models in this Muslim society today that I think have done a lot for Islam um, and, to, for the, and to help out this Muslim ummah are, for example, Dr. Zakir Nayak, Sheikh Yusuf Estes, Dr. Ibrahim Jamali, Dr. Tawfiq Chowd, and many other great sheikhs and scholars. Uh, you know, I asked you some of these questions before. I think they're important now. You know, for, for some of the kids that are taking Britney Spears and J-Lo, 50 Cents, you know, Rough Rug, Riggedy Ride, these people as role models. Uh, you know, and they're listening to you now. Why should they take who you mentioned as role models as opposed to taking these other people as role models? Well, um, well, like the people that I took from role models, they've always had good characters, they always had good manners, they always had good, um, they had always, they were always in good, they were always trying to do good, helping other people, and most of these people, some of their songs aren't very good, and some of their songs portray bad message that kids as young as me we shouldn't be listening to it and we shouldn't really know about it. We should keep their mind, our minds clean from these things. And so um, it's important to have role models that are going to teach you good things that are going to, instead of teaching you bad things and teaching you worse things than we're supposed to know at this young age. Let's talk about respect in Islam. Mm. What does Islam teach you about respect? Well, Islam teaches us respect and to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, respecting Him, respecting God, is by obeying His commandments and obeying what He's telling us to do. And from that, we also, um, we also have to respect all of mankind, Muslim or non-Muslim. So we have to respect them, and we also have to respect plants and animals and other living things. That's beautiful. Islam is giving you a complete balance. Mm -hmm. But the first thing, as you mentioned, is respecting the one who gave you life. Yes. So you want to worship him alone. Mm. What if someone says, look, you know, uh, I worship a messenger like Jesus. Mm. I mean, is that the right thing to do? No, because even the messengers, in some point or another, they always said when they were stuck in something or they had to get help, they always prayed to God. They always prayed to Allah. They always went back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Allah subhanahu wa and to help them and to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help. So even they, they always surrendered themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So. Now when you say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, are you talking about some moon god? Who are you talking about when you say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the God who created this universe and who created everything in it. 
And that's the one that these messengers, they called upon when they were in need. Yes. What, now, the next question, why were these messengers sent? Why did God send all these messengers? Well, God created everything, am I correct? He created everything and He created the world and He created everything in it. So he, he did that and basically, for I'm going to give you an example. Of, for example, if you made a car and it didn't use gasoline and it didn't use energy, I mean it didn't use electricity, and it used a whole new type of energy and many people didn't know how to use it. You're the only one that knew. And would you give a manual to help people use that car or would you just let people try to gas it up and break this part of the car and, and try to power it up and break this other part? Or would you send a manual, maybe even make a video teaching people how to use this car? Well, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did. He made us, and then He sent down books and messengers to help guide us to the one path that's going to help us in this world, this life, and in the hereafter. And there are some of these prophets, for example, were Adam, Lut, Nuh, um, Nuh um, Ismail, Ishaq, and many other, um, Prophet Muhammad, Prophet Isa, Prophet Musa, and many other prophets and messengers. And they were sent from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they're sent at different times for different tribes. Um, but in the end, they always came with the one same message. The, there was only one message that all came with. And that was believing in one God. Believing in Allah. One, one God. Yes. That was the message from all the prophets. Yes. And what else? And also, they, and also to treat your neighbors kindly, treat other people kindly, do business fairly, and many other things like that. So much, so much to cover, and so little time, so we're going to get through all of this. We, we promised the people Abraham. Where's Abraham? Abraham! Assalamu alaikum, Aliyah! Alaikum Hey, mashallah, I watched your last show. Uh, it was really exciting. Thank you. Oh, uh, can I ask you some questions? Sure. I also met your brother. Uh, give my salams, okay? <laughs> Okay, uh, okay, uh, I'm kind of hungry. Ah, is it, can I, can I eat? Mm. No, that's a mic. Ah, oh, sorry, I, I forget sometimes. Uh, tell me now, like, you know, there's some people, they, they, uh, they're confused. They think Islam is like terrorism and, 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 and worshiping Muhammad and, and, and uh, they want to burn the Quran. Uh, what are you going to say to them? Uh, is that what Islam is about? Like terrorism and uh, blow this person up? Oh, my hat, sorry. Ah. Can you put my hat back on? Sure. Okay, uh, sorry about that. Thank you. Jazakallah khaira. Okay, uh, what do you got to say to them? Please. Um, well, Islam, it, Islam isn't about that. It's about peace and it's for peace for all of mankind and for all of humanity. Uh, mashallah. But, you know, how can you get peace? First, what do you got, what's the first thing you got to do? I mean, what do you got to do to have peace? Well, there are five pillars in Islam. Ah, five pillars. Tell me the five pillars. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Right, well, the first pillar is Shahada, saying there is one God and that He is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the second pillar is... How about, is there a messenger? That, what else you got? Is there, what else? There's only one God and what, what Muhammad is the messenger? Uh, yes, and Muhammad is the messenger. Okay, go ahead, keep going. And then the second pillar is um, Salat, so praying. Then that's salad? Salat. Salat. Oh, not salad, like food or something. Mm, salat. salat. What does that mean, Salat? Um, salat means prayer. Oh, prayer. Pray to God. Yes. That's good. Why wouldn't you pray to God? So you got to pray to just God? When you say uh, pray to God, do you mean Jesus or Muhammad or the moon? or What, what are you talking about? Well, pray I to mean, who? I mean praying to one Allah. Praying to one God. God. Okay, go ahead. And then, so that's the lot. And then it's um, zakat, giving alms, giving charity to the poor people who are in need of it. And then psalm, fasting, and that's the, that's the fourth pillar, which is psalm, and which is fasting in the month of Ramadan. And also there is some fasting also you could do, you don't have to, but you can do on Mondays and Thursdays, so um, fasting. And then there's Hajj, which is the fifth pillar. It's a pilgrimage. To where? To is that to Disney World? No, it's to Mecca. Ah, Mecca. Ah, that's like the first house of worship by Abraham, right? Yes. Uh, to worship what? The Kaaba? No, to worship Allah. Ah, to worship God. I, I like how you answer that. Good. I got to go, but I want to... Can you fix my hand? Sure. Okay, I got to go, uh, but I want to sing a song. Can you sing a song with me? Okay, I'm going to start and then you go. Are you ready? And everybody at home, sing along. Huggy, 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 huggy. I love you. 
Huggy, 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 I love you. Huggy, 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 will you love me too? Huggy, 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 will you love me too? I love a lot and I love you too. I love a lot and I love you too. Huggy, 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 and I love you. Huggy, 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 I love you. Okay, sister, I'm going to go and uh, make sure that you do the hug to your father and your mother and, and your, uh, your brother and sister. Give them a hug. Tell them you love them. Because okay. we got to love each other, right? Right. Okay, but most important, who do you love the most? Allah Oh, you love God the most. MashaAllah. Salaam alaikum. Salaam alaikum, everybody. Death and the Day of Judgment, the mercy of Allah, these are the things that finally made me realize there is no time to delay anymore. I wanted to take my shahada right there. there is none greater the essence of spirituality is to become more sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, contemplate death itself. It is very, very scary, but it brings you back to reality. There is a life which is everlasting in the hereafter. You have to make a conscious decision of which group of people do you want to be of, the people of heaven or the people of hell. Back here on the Dean Show, and what do you think about Abraham? <laughs> He's funny. He's nice. You like his song? Yeah. Yeah. So encouraging to hug your parents, <laughs> hug your hug your mom, <laughs> huh? All right. So you you covered now with him the five pillars. Yes. This is very important. That's that's the the, the bedrock of Islam. <laughs> you know, testifying that there's no god but God. That you only worship the one who created you, and Muhammad is the last and final messenger. And this would accept you would accept all the other messengers that, that came before him. Jesus, Moses, Abraham, Noah, then the prayer five times a day, the charity, the fasting, and the hajj. And, you know, if anybody wants to accept Islam, you know, this is what they have to do. It's very simple. So you've learned so much in, sh in so short of time. Now, let's move on. We're almost out of time. Tell us, Alia, you have some tips that you give youth when you speak. What are these tips? Well, the first tip is always remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that He's always watching you even if other people don't see you and you're doing something bad. And the second thing is keep gaining knowledge about great leaders so that you may emulate them. And the third tip is be an example. Don't wait for everybody else to be the good leader. If you see the time to help someone stop doing something bad, help them. And the fourth tip is be humble. Always be humble on this and always help people out. This may seem hard at some times, but my mom told me that this is truly when we show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we love, we, we love him and thank him for his blessings. And number five, always say alhamdulillah for everything. And sometimes your chest or your trial or your tribulation is hard. Remember that it could always be worse. Really great advice. Really great advice. And how can people, if they want to read some of those books that you have written, how can they get in touch with you? Well, they can go to my website, www.aliyanuri.com. That's spelled A-L-Y-A-N-U-R-I.com. So they can go to that website. And also, um, there's this other website I have, and I see this is with me and my brother, and it's for, more for kids who are making games and everything on that website. And that website is called www.thingseverykidshouldknow.com. Again, that's www.thingseverykidshouldknow.com. Well, thank you again for joining us here on The okay. Dean Show. I'm thank sure you. so many people got the benefit. And inshallah, we'll see you again next time inshallah. if you're in town. Thank you. May Allah reward you. And thank you for tuning in, sitting tight through another episode of The Dean Show. You got to learn a little bit more about Islam. Islam is the fastest growing way of life in the world. And Islam doesn't call you, doesn't call the children, doesn't call human beings to go and kill other human beings. 
Islam is about establishing justice. Islam is about establishing goodness in your homes, in your societies. And you can see from the little Muslims that we have, this is what the parents are teaching them. Islam, and this is what's breeding good because Islam is good and God is good and He only accepts good and He sent the best message. The best message to humanity and that's to call human beings to establish a direct dialogue, to have peace with the one who created you. And that's how you can truly have peace within yourself and you can have peace with the environment and those around you. And we hope, we really hope that you take the time out, continue to come back here to the Dean Show, to continue in your quest because there's a lot of things out there distracting you, but you're taking the time out, you're reflecting. What's the purpose of life? Why am I here in this world? And you know what? Everything about Islam is making sense. There were some misconceptions that you had, but you came to the Dean Show, and now you understand why the Muslim woman covered. Jesus' mother covered. Jesus wasn't God, but he prayed to God. You're learning all these things. You learned the five pillars of Islam. It makes sense. It makes sense. It's something that you don't have to do a lot of mental gymnastics to make fit. It's something that goes with your very nature. Worship the one God. Do good. Not just to Muslims, to all mankind. To all mankind. And there is one hadith that we'll end with. This is a saying of the last and final messenger sent to mankind. That he is saying that those that do not have mercy to God's creation, to the creatures on earth, God will not have mercy on them. And Islam is a merciful religion. It's a merciful way of life. And we hope that, inshallah, God willing, that you want to know more. And if you want to get a Free Quran, which is the verbatim word of God, call the number on the screen, 1-800-662-ISLAM. And if you want to follow the way of life of all the messengers of God, including Jesus, go ahead and call. Even if you have some criticism, they're all welcome. We can come to a, 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 an understanding through healthy dialogue. And until next time, peace be unto you. I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lie is by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lie is by my side, I